GraphQL has been around for a while now and represents a paradigm shift in API development. It serves as both a query language and a runtime environment for executing queries. So today we'll go through a brief primer on what GraphQL is and then look at some of the features we can abuse to glean information and steal sensitive data. If you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. All right, so most of you watching probably have a good grasp of REST, but maybe you haven't had the chance to experiment with GraphQL yet. So before we dive into the lab, let's do a quick comparison. In a REST architecture, you typically have multiple endpoints, each designed to return a specific data set or to carry out some kind of operation. For example, you might have slash API slash users uh, for user data and then API slash posts. And this returns all of the posts that are in the database. And if you need data from both, you'd basically have to make two requests. Now, GraphQL uses a single endpoint where clients can request complex data in a single query. And this is achieved through its type system and query language. So if we consider a social media application, so with REST, fetching a user profile and all of the posts and maybe the number of followers or a list of followers might require a number of API calls, um, probably three or more. Now with GraphQL, you can get all of this data in one request and also avoid overfetching. So it's not gonna give you loads of excess data as well. So what we do is we specify exactly the fields that we need from each object. And while this flexibility is powerful, it does have some security considerations. For example, we need to carefully consider the query complexity to avoid denial of service. And we also need to implement proper field level authorization to avoid things like unauthorized access to information or information disclosure vulnerability. And this process of validating queries and making sure that clients have access to the right data can be more complicated when we introduce nested queries as well, rather than just a single endpoint that returns a set of data when we can decide, hey, the client has access or the client doesn't have access. Set a new standard in your professional journey with TCM security certifications and dive deep into advanced cybersecurity tactics with our comprehensive courses. Our challenging exams are designed to test your skills to the fullest, preparing you for real-world cybersecurity roles. Explore certifications.tcm-sec.com and redefine your professional potential. So, so let's take a quick look at this lab. And all we have is a couple of users and a couple of posts. And you can see here, we have the type definitions and these types are basically like objects. So we have a user type and it has all of the information. And then we have a post type and it has information and we have a query type as well. And then we have resolvers. So here are kind of top level resolvers. So if we query users, it's gonna return all users. If we query a user, it's gonna run this function and grab the user ID and return that information as well. And then when we come on to nested queries, or if we're trying to grab posts and followers and things like this, then this is going to resolve that as well. All right, so let's run the lab with node app.js. And then all we're going to do is come to here, localhost 4000. And here we have the Apollo sandbox. So we're just going to come into query our server so that we can interact with our application without needing a front end. And here this example query is probably going to give us an error. So if we just run this, you can see that obviously example query doesn't exist. All right, so here what we want is we want to query the user and we're going to pass in an ID. So we go user ID and we're going to pass in one and then here we're just going to pass in the name so hopefully it returns the name of the first user and this query kind of fetches only basic information, but it's a good starting point. And it's basically equivalent to the REST API endpoints. So something like slash API slash users slash one. And in the same query, if we wanted to grab the posts of that user, we could do something like we can grab their name and then we can say, hey, posts like this. 
and in here we can get the title of our posts and here you can see that Jeremy has two posts one called my first post and the second one called introspection is the direction and of course we can include other fields in here too so for example if we wanted the content of a post depending on where we are in the application we might only want to grab the title so that we can list the posts because the content might be really long and this would result in a large response in this case our content is quite short but of course we can optionally include the content as and when we need and this really demonstrates GraphQL's ability to let the client define exactly what is needed in the response and avoids overfetching and underfetching so overfetching being fetching too much data and underfetching being not refetching enough data and resulting in multiple queries and in this case we don't need to send multiple requests we just have one query and it gives us exactly Exactly what we need and of course we could do other things so for example we could nest in here followers and let's say we want the name of all the followers of Jeremy so if this was like a profile for Jeremy we have his name we can highlight the posts that Jeremy has on cards and we could list the followers below as well so there's of course a lot more to GraphQL than this and we haven't touched on things like mutations where we can update data and subscriptions but for part one I think this this is enough to get us going. And if you want more detail, then let me know in the comments below and I'll make a GraphQL part two. And of course, I have a GraphQL module in my advanced web hacking course, so you can check that out as well. Just remember that with GraphQL, the client define, defines exactly what data they want at each level. Everything comes from a single request, so send one query instead of multiple requests like we do in REST. And the API has a lot of flexibility, so it doesn't need to change to support new client requirements. With this structure, different clients can query different information as needed. So let's move on to introspection next. So now let's talk about about GraphQL's introspection, which is a powerful feature that lets clients query the GraphQL API to better understand its schema. And introspection queries retrieve details about types and fields and operations and documentation. And this capability is one of the reasons why GraphQL is so flexible and kind of like developer friendly, I suppose. And it's worth noting that often introspection is enabled by default and often considered a feature rather than a security risk. And obviously, if you have feelings about whether introspection should be enabled or disabled on production systems, I think it should be disabled, then let me know down in the comments below. But the main argument for it is that disabling introspection is, is kind of security through obscurity because it's only giving you information about the schema. But in a perfect world, systems would be secure and then it wouldn't matter, but obviously no system is perfect and no implementation is perfect either. So disabling it is going to make our job as attackers a little bit harder because we're going to have to dig or we're not going to have access to information that would help us exploit the targets. Anyway, let's take a look at how we can use introspection in Burp Suite. So here, what I have is a post and you can see that we're posting to just Slash, but of course, often you'll see slash GraphQL or slash V1 GraphQL or something like this. But usually it's quite easy to identify the GraphQL endpoints. And if you have the in GraphQL plugin, installed, you can see the query here in a slightly nicer format, but Burp Suite does have an automatic detection for this as well. But I find that more often than not, this is a little bit malformed or the spacing is off and things like that. So generally I just look at the inQL one. But either way, we come over to repeater and we can use either of these and just send. And then you can see that we get the same data back that we did before. So we have the Jeremy and his posts and the followers as well. So to do introspection, all we need to do is right click, come to GraphQL and set introspection query. And there are a number of different queries that we can use for introspection, some of them grabbing more information than others. And maybe on some targets, there's some filtering. So introspection might be enabled, but somewhat filtered. And we might not be able to use the schema keyword, for example, and we'll have to do something else. But that's a topic for another video. And once we hit send, we get all of the information back about our targets. And this is kind of 
complicated in terms of like, we don't want to have to sit and pick this apart. So there's a couple of things that we can do here. First, we can right click and go to GraphQL and save GraphQL queries to the sitemap. And then we can just come over to the targets come to localhost here and here we can see all of the queries so we can use these as a base for our attack. Second what I like to do is come to here and grab the query, copy it, come over to Chrome and then GraphQL Voyager and if we come to graphql-kit.com forward slash graphql-voyager, hit change schema, come to introspection, paste the results in, we can see our schema in, in a visual way. And if I move my face out of the way, we can see our top level queries. So when we query user, we can see our user type, which is basically a user object, the information in here, and then also we can see posts and how they're linked together as well. And when we're looking at denial of service and things, we want to look for we want to look for recursion. So if we query users, we can then grab the posts, and then from here we can grab the user again, and we can maybe cause denial of service with nested queries. But what we're actually looking at today is for information disclosure. So here I can see a couple of sensitive fields that we might not want anybody to be able to access. And of course the email field could leak users' emails and the password field could leak users' passwords. So let's see whether we can go ahead and do this and find a information disclosure vulnerability. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my original query here and in the user, all I'm gonna do is, let's say, let's change this to user two, for example. Here we have Jessme, and we're not actually logged in as anybody at the moment because it's a very simple application. There's no real authentication, but here I'm just gonna add email and password. So when we're querying this user, we get this information back. And this is a common issue with GraphQL in that we get information disclosure issues. And of course, if I come back and switch this user to user ID one here, we can get Jeremy's password and email as well. I would say more often than not, you're going to find things like email addresses, um, personally identifiable information, PII, but occasionally you'll find things like passwords as well. And depending on the application, obviously you're going to target different things. You might find API keys, you might find hidden posts, you might get access to messages that you shouldn't have access to. And so yeah, this is one of the common weaknesses with GraphQL and something that you definitely have to test for. This example was fairly straightforward because introspection was enabled. We can easily see the schema. We can see all of the relationships between the types or objects, but there are other ways to glean information. For example, when introspection is disabled, we might use field stuffing or other techniques to get information and continue attacking our target. But again, those are topics for another video. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the topic and learn something new. And if you want to go deeper into GraphQL, then I recommend picking up the book Black Hat's GraphQL. It's an excellent book, or if you prefer video, then you can check out the advanced web hacking course over on TCM Academy. Catch you next time.